But I want to talk about chop and drop for a minute because I use the term a lot and people don't always know what that means. So we're going to talk about three plants that I really love for chop and drop. My core philosophy really is, what would the forest do? I'm getting the gardens ready for some planting. I put in a tiny little sun gold tomato there, and you can't see it, but she is surrounded by carrots, which will hopefully pop up in a couple of weeks, because carrots love tomatoes. I top dress with chicken, things from the chicken coop, so I, I pull out the soil, and it's got manure and bedding mixed into it, and then I use worm castings and tree mulch. Hopefully this is going to be an effective iguana control this year. I'm also trying this fence all the way around the garden because I'm hoping that it is wobbly enough that they just don't feel safe and they don't climb it. Haven't figured out what I'm going to do to keep them from coming over this fence, but I'll figure it out. And then I have this beautiful tower garden that Lenny made for me a few years back and I'm finally getting to utilize it because I've got the irrigation in. Let's talk about chop and drop. First I want to mention that I never ever ever turn my soil. I use the pitchfork and I just loosen it. And then I go a little bit forward and loosen it. So you, you, your soil web is going to do a lot of the work for you if you don't disturb it. But I want to talk about chop and drop for a minute because I use the term a lot and people don't always know what that means. So we're going to talk about three plants that I really love for chop and drop. The first is comfrey. And as you can see, she's waiting for it to cool down. Comfrey is what they call a dynamic accumulator. And what that means is she's got a super deep tap root. She's going to go all the way down and bring up some really important minerals. So I use her as a chop and drop and a medicinal and you can make a compost sort of tea out of her. Another chop and drop plant, which is also a yummy salad plant, is Moringa. Moringa grows super, super prolifically. She's got some chayote in there with her. And Moringa is a green manure, like comfrey, so that means that there is nitrogen and it is going to do a really good job for your garden. So I just, when I turn her back, I just put her in the garden or make a tea. And then the last one is Tithonia, Mexican sunflower. And she, right now, is probably about 10 feet tall. Say hi to the bees. I've cut her back a lot, and I'm going to keep cutting her back. And then I just take the leaves, and I put them in the garden, and then I take the sticks and I put them in the mulch pile because they don't break down as fast. So the concept of chop and drop is that you're simply leaving in the garden the things that are good for the garden. When I weed, I will many times put it up against a fence or in a corner, or if I'm not planning on planting for a while, I will just chop it up and put it back down in the ground. Everything that comes from Mother Nature should go to Mother Nature. And if you do chop and drop, not only is your garden much healthier, but it's a lot easier. You're not hauling things all over creation. You're just putting them right where they are. That's some really nice turmeric coming up over here. Can't wait to taste that. Anyway, so that is chop and drop. This is a little bit of the backyard. It's a beautiful, misty, rainy day, so we're getting a lot of work done. And we'll see you next time.